Tonight, I wanna speak to you about the blessing of staying peaceful. The blessing of staying peaceful. Peace is possible. Peace is possible. Matthew chapter five, verse nine. You would know this, it's a familiar part of the Gospel of Matthew, but this is what it says. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Our world needs peace. Our homes need peace. I would rather have the peace of God in my life than to have chaos and turmoil and craziness. We understand that not everything goes well in life. You gotta be around long enough to realise it doesn't always go your way. But we do understand that we have a promise from God, every single one of us here tonight, everyone listening, everyone joining, is that we have an assurance from our Heavenly Father that He, and He's one of His names, He's got lots of names, but one of His names, He is the Prince of Peace. And in troubled times, where everything seems to be uncertain and we're not sure how it's all gonna unfold, we got to understand that our hearts can be full of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called the children of God. And peace is possible in the face of adversity and challenge. Let me say it again. Peace, shalom, the God kind of peace is possible even in the face of adversity and challenge. Throughout history, we have seen God speak peace into His people who have been confronted with setbacks, disappointments and uncertainty. But God still knows how to speak peace into the 21st century. He still needs how to speak peace into our hearts tonight. And I believe that God wants to make sure that we are not just hanging in there, but we are actually all that He has called us to be. You know, around 600 years before Jesus was born, God chose to use a young man called Jeremiah to speak God's intentions towards His people who were facing immense challenges. And some of the verses that you would be familiar with, but one verse I wanna just look at tonight uh, to, to launch from, and that is Jeremiah 17, verses seven to eight. And this is what it says, and it may be familiar to most of us, but again, it may be the first time for some. And this is what it says. This is what God was wanting to say to people at a difficult time in history. But I believe equally, God still wants to speak to you and I, even through Jeremiah. And this is what it says. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and who have made Him their hope and confidence. They are like trees replanted in Eden, speaking of original intentions, God's original purposes. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not anxious by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Another verse that you would be familiar with, many of us, Jeremiah also spoke, God spoke through Jeremiah, verse 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And we gotta believe in this moment right now that every single one of us have a God-given future. Our children have a future. Your children have a future. The people of Ukraine have a future. When God gets involved in our story, we gotta know that our future, our future is in His hands and He knows how to take care of our future in Jesus' Name. But I love the picture that is spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And I don't know about you if you're a visual person, but I'm a very visual person. Today, if you're very visual, you're gonna do better at school. When I was back at school a long, long time ago, my report cards didn't really say, Mark is very good at visual things. But I love the way God always knows how to grab our attention. He knows how to give us a perspective and often through pictures and metaphors. And this is one that Jeremiah, he speaks a picture and I know that a lot of us, maybe we're familiar with plants. Maybe you're a plant lover. Maybe you're a, I don't know, someone who has bought a plant and then been very perplexed, like how has it died so quickly? Or why is it like brown before it's time? We understand brown leaves, even if you're not a gardener. But what I do know is this, that this picture is possible when we hold on to God. This isn't a picture of some fantasy or some idealism that's out there. It's not a concept that cannot be reached. 
This is actually what God was trying to say to people who were facing a difficult time. But what would God want to say to you and I who are facing a difficult time? And so He gives us a picture of what it's like to be planted, of what it's like to actually be towards the things of God. And tonight again, you've turned up to the house of God. You've leaned into His presence. You've leaned towards Him. Jesus, our Jesus, your Jesus. There's a one verse in the Bible that's profound that says He set His face towards Jerusalem. In other words, it's a, it's a understanding that He knew what was in Jerusalem. There was trouble there. It was the crucifixion. He knew He was gonna come to the end, but it was also the beginning for all of humanity. And He set his face towards Jerusalem. I don't know about you, but I don't naturally want to set my face towards trouble. And yet if you meet some of these people from our church in the Ukraine, they have set themselves towards whatever trouble is coming and they're trusting God that He is going to be with them at a very difficult time. We need to know that God is with us that His promise is good in all the seasons. When it's great, it lifts all of us. But when it's not great, it affects all of us. And so this tree, it says, it's not anxious by the heat. It's not worried by long months of drought. And I think it's important that we understand that with God, we actually can see God turn brown leaves into green leaves. Obviously, it's a metaphor. But what's not good in your life right now, God says, give it to me because I am the God who can turn brown leaves into green leaves. Maybe you're not good at getting fruit in your life, but hang out with me because I'm very good at producing fruit in your life. God is able to take whatever it is, whatever it is, and He can say, trust me with it and watch what I can do with it. And that's what Jeremiah was doing to God's people at a very difficult time, giving them a picture of what it's like when we hold on to God. I would rather do my life with God than to do life without Him, amen? So a picture of peace. This is a picture of what peace can look like under pressure. Planted people tend to be peaceful people. I really believe that when we're planted, we've got a much better chance to be peaceful. I don't believe God wants us to be unplanted. I believe God is clearly indicating that there is a benefit to being planted and to stay planted, amen? But the definition of peace, it says this, free from disturbance, tranquil, calm, restful, pleasant, quiet, still, relaxed. Does that describe you right now? Does that describe me right now? But one of the signs one of the indicators that you know that you are peaceful, I believe is seen in your capacity to resist anxiousness when facing trouble or hardship or pressure. And I believe it's important that we understand that peace is not a concept. It's not an app on your phone. Who wants a phone peace app that says 80% peace? I'm like, I don't want 80% peace. I want 100% peace in Jesus' Name. But the good news is, that peace is not a concept, it's a person. And His wonderful name is Jesus. And so I believe that we can actually experience restfulness. We can be calm in the midst of craziness. I believe the, the, the Prince of Peace, this very idea of the, 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 what peace can do in our lives, that we can stay peaceful even if everything's going crazy. It can't be abstract, some random idea. It's got to be a reality in our lives, something that we say, you know what, it is crazy, and, 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 but there's something called the peace of God that rules and reigns in our hearts. It's gotta be tangible. It's gotta have substance to it. It's gotta be something that actually can be put to the test. And it's not that we get it wrong. It's not that we're not, uh, 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 that we can be uh, unrestful and we can be uh, facing all sorts of things, but we can make a decision always to say, God, I choose peace over chaos. I choose the Prince of Peace to lead and rule me and my family through any season, through any craziness in Jesus' Name. I believe it's a choice that we can all make in Jesus' Name. You know, a few years ago, actually many years ago, Joyce and I were on our honeymoon. we have been married 27 years. And I think I beat the guys who got married 25 and 26. But we got married 27 years ago, and for our honeymoon, we went to the island of Crete. And uh, yeah, it was very nice. 
And we got to see one of the islands, Santorini. But when we were heading out on our honeymoon, my parents were able to bless us with that. And when we arrived at the island, um, you know, back then and then when you book a hotel or you book a, a holiday package, uh, you arrive. And uh, when we arrived, basically our luggage didn't turn up. No one's luggage turned up. So, you know, everyone's excited. You know what it's like to go on holiday and, and your luggage doesn't turn up and the atmosphere changed drastically. And back then, when you booked a holiday, you went with an agent and the agent representative came out to announce to everyone who was looking forward to their two-week holiday in the island of Crete, I'm sorry, but your luggage has not turned up. Well, <laughs> it, it wasn't worry to worship right there. It was... It, was, uh, it got very uncomfortable and very noisy very quickly. And I remember there was this big Dutchman. His voice was booming, you know, and uh, he just jumped on this lovely, hot, you know, uh, travel representative and just smothered her. And everyone was upset that their luggage. And anyway, a few minutes later, everything, you know, the lady was able to calm most of us down. We were put on a bus. And back then you got on a bus and what you had to do is... Um, you had to get on the bus and when you got to your hotel, you got off if it was your hotel. And if it wasn't, you stayed on until your hotel, there was bus envy, you know, hotel envy coming out of everyone. It wasn't a good way to do it. People were nudging each other like, why didn't you book that hotel? That looks much better than one we're going to. But we were sitting at the back of the bus, Joyce and I, and we were peaceful. And the guy who was big and loud from, uh, he turned around, he was sitting in front of us and he turned around and he said, um, why are you guys so calm? We just turned around and said, we're on our honeymoon. What do we need luggage for? <laughs> we were peaceful. We were calm. We were tranquil. But listen, the purpose of God's peace, the purpose of God's peace is to reassure you that God has provided everything for you. And so some of the things that I really wanna leave with you tonight that really can reassure us about the power, the reassurance and the strength of what God's shalom, peace can do in our lives. The first thing here, God's peace, the word in Hebrew obviously is shalom. God's shalom is a gift. And like all gifts, it can be a huge blessing. John chapter 14, verse 27, I am telling you these things while I'm still living with you. Your friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things that I have told you. I am leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you, peace. I don't leave you as the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned and lonely. So don't let your hearts be anxious or troubled. It's an encouragement, a reminder, even though we are anxious, even though we do face trouble, it's the hope of God's Word in our lives, amen? It's not about hearing it, it's about believing it. It's about applying it, it's about living it. I'm gonna get a hold of His Word, amen? Because I would rather be untroubled than troubled. I would rather experience His peace. I believe there's more in God's Word when it comes to the area of peace. Here's another one for you. God's peace can help you stay healthy. God's supernatural peace can help us to stay healthy. Proverbs 14, verse 30, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. A peaceful heart literally can help us to stay healthy in our physical bodies. I, I, want, I choose peace in Jesus' name, amen. I know what it's like to be unhealthy physically, but I tell you what, God's peace can lift us, can surround us, can sustain us, and can help every single one of us to see better days. Jealousy is like cancer to the bones. And I believe we need to be people who choose the Prince of Peace for all the seasons of our lives. Here's another one for you. God's peace will lead you. As, uh, this is what uh, Chris Mendez spoke from this morning. God's peace, shalom, will lead you. Psalm 23, verse one to two. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Do you need to be led towards peaceful streams tonight? Because He wants to lead you there. Would you let Him lead you to better days? Would you let 
the Prince of Peace show you where the peaceful streams are for your future, for your family, for your children? Because it's here tonight. It's not an idea to uh, pontificate. It's an idea that you can make real for your own life, for your own family, for your own future. His Prince, His presence can lead us. You don't need God to be religious, but you do need Him if you want His presence. And His presence is full of amazing peace, amen? Here's another one for you. God's peace will make a distinction. God's peace will make a distinction. Exodus chapter 11. Maybe it's a story you're familiar with, talking about God's people, Israel, in the land of Egypt. And this is what it says. Then a loud wail will rise throughout the land of Egypt, a wail like no one has heard before or will ever hear again. But amongst the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that not even a dog will bark, then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. God, supernatural peace can make the difference. It's not that we are anything special in the sense of we're ordinary people, we're getting about our lives, trying to build our homes, build our future, raise our kids, build churches, reach out to help other people in need. It's ordinary in so many ways. And yet God's promise is that the peace of God can make a distinction. And when you're at work and your work colleagues are worried about the economy, are worried about the elections, they're worried about what's gonna happen next, what's gonna come their way next. You can be there not to be smug or you know proud or aloof or have this kind of presence that's not really pleasant at all, but the presence of God can come into your life it can come through your life and it can lift the atmosphere, even at work, even at home, even at the office, even here tonight. His presence lifts everyone. We just gotta be willing to let the Prince of Peace do the lifting, amen? Let there be a distinction in our house that we are ruled and we are surrounded and we are sustained by the perfect peace of heaven, amen? He wants to make sure it's in us so that it can come out of us. Here's another one for you. God's peace can help us to see the future. You know, over this last couple of years, I've watched how especially all ages, all generations been affected by the pandemic, but especially I've watched the consequences of the last couple of years on the impact on the young people, the young adults, those who may be at the end of their high school or stepping into maybe university or thinking about how do I even move forward? And we need to be open and, and we need to be um, considering and we need to be reassuring to a younger generation that maybe have been overwhelmed with way too much negativity, overwhelmed with everything. When I was younger, I didn't know half the things. I didn't know even who a rich person was because when I was a kid growing up, you didn't get to know that kind of stuff maybe because I grew up in a, in a family, a military family, but I didn't know the difference. My daughter today, she's just turned 21 and she knows everything about everything. And that's not just because she's 21, but this generation, they have access to so much. But when it comes to our future, when it comes to your future, this is what 2 Peter chapter 3 says. And I believe it's important as God's people that we know how to look to the future that God has promised us in Jesus' name, amen. We can all look to the natural and have our hearts overwhelmed. We can all look to the natural circumstances and be overwhelmed and like, oh my goodness. But I tell you, God is so good to us. He knows how to get us through these things. He knows how to lift our head. He knows how to lift our hearts. And I believe it's important that we can hold on to God when it comes to our future. This is what it says, Second Peter chapter three. We are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth He has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives. Make every effort to be found living peaceful lives. Good news tonight, we can do this. You can do this because Jesus is here. He's always here. He was in the past, He's in the present and He's in the future. And we need to know that we can go to the Prince of Peace when it comes to our future. Maybe you struggle to see the future. Maybe you're struggling to see beyond this moment, but I know this, He's always leading us to our future. In Jesus' Name, can anyone say Amen? 
Here's another couple for you, two more. God's peace will bring confidence. God's peace, God's shalom will bring confidence. Romans chapter five, verses one to two. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we, you now stand secure and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Amen. You know the peace of God, it can build your confidence. I don't know if you're a naturally a confident person. There are some people that just seem to be naturally confident, but I've been around the house of God for a long time and I've seen in my own life that confidence, I've never been the best, I've never been the worst, I've always been in the middle. And, and, and I think that's sometimes a good place to be because that means that you, from the person being in the middle, you're not the best, you're not the worst, you've had to work hard at everything you do. And in sports, I had to work hard at everything. I, and improvement came not because I was good, it's because someone saw the potential and spoke to it in Jesus' Name. And we've got to all be encouraged that our confidence can grow because we surround ourselves by the peace of God. You've got to go to Him. You've got to stay with Him. You've got to hold on to Him. And you've got to let Him hold you when you feel like, I don't know if I can hold on to you anymore. But it will build confidence. And you'll know because it will come out of your mouth. You'll sound differently. You'll sing differently. The atmosphere will change when there's a confidence, but it's connected to the fruit of the Spirit and it's called peace. Amen. And the last one I believe can, again, just help us to remind ourselves about the benefits or the strength of staying peaceful. Peace is possible. And this is what it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Many of you would know this, heard it many times. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You know, Jesus is our safe place. The safest place you will ever experience in your life is in Jesus. He is your safe space. He is the safest place you will ever find. Wherever you're trying to find safety, you will never find more safety in the person of Jesus. He's the one who can handle all of us. He's the only one who knows every detail about our lives. He's the one, he's the only one who can love us with an everlasting love. He's the only one who can carry us in a difficult season and still get us to where we need to be. He is the lifter, he is the burden carrier, he is the one that lightens the load, he is the one that restores, he is the one that can pour in the oil and the wine, he is the Prince of Peace. And tonight, could we again remind our hearts, teach our hearts, open our hearts to the peace that is supernatural. Because I believe in a disruptive decade where the paradox is things are going crazy. Things that we thought were, were trustworthy are not so trustworthy. Things that have been disrupted. And at the same time, we're gonna experience changes, opportunity, new things are gonna come out of a disruptive decade. And so at this moment in, in history, it, God needs His people. He needs His sons and daughters being filled with shalom, being at peace with Him, at peace with what we're here to do because it's the peace of God that rules and reigns. It's the peace of God that's gonna lift us in this difficult season because even though externally everything seems to be going crazy, we can still be secure in Him, peaceful, trusting God, knowing that we're gonna see better days in Jesus' Name. So why don't we hold on to the Prince of Peace in Jesus' Name? Do we wanna do that? Do you wanna do that? What's the alternative? What's the alternative? More chaos, more disruption, more pain. I believe tonight, Jesus wants to refresh every single one of us. I believe tonight as we look to Him, He will look to us. I believe if we will open up to Him, He will be so gracious to open up to us. For us who have been serving Jesus for many years, will you still let the Prince of Peace refresh you, lift you, 
carry you in Jesus' name because I believe the peace of God is not just an idea, it's an absolute reality. So Father, tonight, come on, let's stand to our feet and why don't we open our hearts to the Prince of Peace. Why don't we believe God that tonight through the Holy Spirit that He can refresh. You need refreshing tonight. Maybe for you, the brown leaves are too real, but tonight, why don't you say, God, take these crumply brown leaves and turn them into green leaves in Jesus' Name, because He can, he, that's what He's promised us, amen. So what do you need from Him tonight? What do you need from Him tonight? He's our Father in heaven and He wants to do good to His children in Jesus' Name. What do you need from your heavenly Father tonight? He wants to lift, He wants to restore, He wants to reassure in Jesus' Name. So if you're able to, why don't you lift your hands and just ask again, the Prince of Peace, to do what only He can do in our lives. God, I speak peace over every family. I speak the peace into every home. I speak peace over every child, over every young person. I speak peace into the older generation. I speak peace into all the generations. Lord, I speak supernatural peace, Your peace, Your shalom. Let it be real in this season. Let our heads be lifted, not down. Let our hearts be open, not closed. And let our spirits be surrounded by Your goodness and Your kindness in Jesus' mighty Name. And all of God's people said together, Amen. and all of God's people shouted together, Amen. 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 In a moment, the team, we're gonna again lead us in worship. And it's a chance again for us to put a seal on what God has spoken to us tonight. But why don't we take this moment, and I believe it's one of the most profound moments that we have seen God do in our church and our community, not just here in Sydney, but all around uh, the world where we've had the opportunity to extend the invitation for salvation. I believe right now, this is a moment where people can get right with Jesus. Whether you're joining us online or whether you're literally here and a friend has brought you or whether you're you're here, but you're hanging in there. You, you don't even know what you're gonna do next, but this is a moment to say, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this season, but I'd rather open my heart to Jesus and let the Prince of Peace carry me through a difficult season, amen? So every eye closed, no one looking around. I wanna ask that simple question, how are you with Jesus? Are you good with Him? Have you accepted Him as your Lord and Saviour? Maybe you know about Him, or maybe you didn't know that you could actually open your heart and say yes to Jesus, say yes to the Prince of Peace. Maybe there's many here tonight and you know Jesus, you've walked with Jesus, but life has somehow taken its toll over you. And you're here by the grace of God, but you're just here. And, and you wanna turn them brown leaves into green leaves. And you wanna know that with the strength that He supplies, not the strength that you've got, but the strength that He supplies, Maybe you're here tonight and yeah, you've said yes to salvation, but it's okay to press the reset button. It's okay to say, yes, Jesus, here I am, receive me again. I know that I would rather do my life with you than without you. So wherever you are right now, whatever your story is, you've got to remind yourself it is unfinished. And I believe God can take all of us and remind all of us that we're gonna do our life with His amazing peace in us, coming out through us in Jesus' Name. So every eye closed, why don't we pray this prayer out loud from the front to the back. If you wanna get right with Jesus, as a family of faith, we're gonna do this, we're gonna share this moment together, but out loud, can we say this? Dear Jesus, today I make my peace with You, the Prince of Peace. I believe You died on the cross for me and to forgive me of all my sins. You showed great, great love towards me. I believe You rose again from the dead to live forevermore, to lead me into the future, to be with You forevermore. So today, Jesus, I call You my Lord, my Saviour, the Prince of Peace in my life. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Every eye closed in a moment. Every eye closed, no one looking around. If there's anybody here tonight, anybody joining us online, and you have prayed that prayer tonight sincerely, 
Maybe for some it's the first time, and maybe for others it's the reset. You've just, again, come back and put yourself in His presence because you know it's better with Jesus. It's been tougher without Him, but you know it's better with Jesus. So every eye closed, no one looking around. I'm gonna ask at the count of three, just you lift your hand. If you've made that prayer, your prayer tonight, if you're doing this online as well, you can join in this moment. But if you've made a decision to put Jesus at the centre of your life, say yes to the Prince of Peace. Every eye closed, no one looking around. As the count of three, just lift your hand nice and high. One, two, three, just lift your hand up nice and high. Wherever you are, just lift it up and say yes. Tonight, that was for me. Tonight, I said yes to the Prince of Peace. I said yes to salvation. I said yes to Jesus. If you've done this online again, then we want to enjoy and we want to celebrate this moment with you. And we pray that again, that God's presence is there where you are right now. Every hand raised. Father, we thank You for every hand that has been raised tonight, for every decision that has been made, for every heart that has called upon Your Name. Father, we commit them to You. Father, we commit ourselves again afresh to You, Father, that You will carry us, that You will lead us and that You will sustain us in this season and through the seasons of life and that we will be who You've called us to be. So Father, thank You again for the work of Jesus in us and the work of Jesus through us towards humanity. In Jesus' Name, we declare that You are the Prince of Peace over our homes, over our families, over our cities, over our nations, over our schools. In Jesus' Name, And everybody said together, and everybody shouted, Amen, Amen. have everyone just bow their heads and close their eyes and you know that was such a I think significant word such a word in season for where so many people are at right now just saying God I, I need your peace you know maybe you're you're following Jesus but you know peace has been something that's been hard to come by I really I want us to pray uh, for the Holy Spirit to really bring peace into the hearts of people today and tonight and if that's you Uh, I'm going to get Mark to come and pray. But if that's you, just with heads bowed and eyes closed, but you're saying, man, I I just really need peace. Uh, Maybe there's a specific situation you're dealing with. Maybe it's just generally you've been uneasy and worried and anxious. I believe this is a moment where we can give those things to God and believe for His peace to fill our hearts. So if that's you, why don't you just lift your hands to God right now wherever you're at. And uh, Mark, why don't you just just come and pray uh, the peace of God over people. Yeah, amen. 
for everyone that's lifting your hands, for all of us that are lifting our hearts towards, you know, there's no one better than Jesus. There is no one better than Jesus. And so Father, we thank You that You have given us Your very best. You've taken our mess, You've taken whatever it is that we have or whatever we are doing right now and we take whatever we are, wherever we are, our emotions, our feelings, our disappointments, our anger, whatever emotion that we have right now, whatever feelings that we have right now, Lord, we give it to You. We give it to You because it's too heavy to carry. And we don't wanna see our lives and our health and our well-being demise. We wanna see all that You have promised us. And so Father, we speak over every person that's calling upon Your Name tonight, upon all of us, sons and daughters, that trust You with all the details. Lord, we ask right now for Your presence through the Holy Spirit. Even when we leave tonight, even when we go in the cars and when we use transportation and we find ourselves in our apartments, in our homes, when we wake up tomorrow morning, Lord, it's not just something that comes and goes. Your presence will be there. Your presence will be there. Your presence will carry us. Your presence will lift us. Lord, I ask in Jesus' Name, the same way You have carried those who are leaving a worn, torn country in the Ukraine, You are not just there, You are equally here. So God, we speak the supernatural peace over every household, every family, every young person, Lord. We pray that they will know that they have a God-given future, that their hearts do not need to be discouraged, that they can see better days because of the presence and the peace of Jesus. So again, we surrender ourselves to Your presence and we open our hearts again and stay like a flower to the sun. Do what only You can do in this moment. Father, help every one of us to see better days in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Can we thank Mark as well? Just uh, what a great word. I love that. I love that. It was so good. And uh, if you lifted your hand tonight, if you were someone who just prayed that prayer and said, man, I, I really needed to make my peace with God, and you prayed that tonight, we'd love to give you a gift. It's a Bible. Uh, just like this one, a New Testament and a really easy translation to read. And so as you leave, we'll have people with these Bibles and uh, you can just grab one as you leave. And if you don't have a Bible and you need one, we'd love to give you one because we believe God's Word really is foundational to seeing our lives move forward. Uh, and we're really growing in our relationship with God. Really, you know, the Word of God is so significant to that. So we've got these available as you leave. And also online, let us know if you prayed that prayer, if you made your peace with God, because we'd love to send you something as well to help you on your journey. So come on, church, one more time. Can we congratulate everybody? Well done.